and some potatoes. So we've got three of them there now. Bed tiller and two de-stoners. So this field was ploughed this week. Then they've gone through it with grubbers, knocked it down a little bit. Then they're going through now with a bed ridger, which makes these beds. Then the two de-stoners go through, take the stones and the clods out like this and drop them in this trench and then the potatoes will get planted into here and the spud planter which is working just over there now will form drills on here just like them and plant the potatoes so we'll go and get a close-up video of it working I know I show you this every year, but it's just different equipment to what I use. I think it's pretty cool to see them all working, especially when they're coming up the field three in a row. I wouldn't want to know what Stuart's fuel bill is though, especially for the last few weeks, because they've been non-stop at it. So the front John Deere has basically got like a rotavator on it. So it's just pulverizing all these big lumps that are the size of your foot into a fine tilt. And then any little clods that are left then the de-stoners will take out. So I'll show you close up in a second. They're all using GPS so they all know exactly where to drive as well. And they know exactly where the plants are to pull in and out. It actually sounds quite quiet that for a John Deere. I don't think it's very tricky hard. Smashing it up there now. On the back. Scoops the soil up now and then shakes it uphill. Little stars then. And it falls from the bottom webs, and then there's the stones going out that side now. That row there. Just like a big motorised sieve. Another one now. I'll probably show you at the end when they turn around and stop, you'll see the star cleaners underneath. <laughs> Matter this way for a second to show me. So that's what's coming out now. So that'd make odd shaped potatoes if it grew in them clods and stones, but equally when they harvest them, you won't be able to separate the potatoes from the stones. So it's not ideal, so that's why you take them out because some of these are potato sized stones. You can see how straight the drills are. They actually don't look straight on the camera, but they are. Say it's all done with GPS. 57.8 litres an hour, that's expensive. It's doing a good job though. I'll quickly show you the planter while we're stopped. So it goes in one of them beds like that. Parts the soil with that plough that's covered in soil and them shoes and it drops the potatoes in. Through this belt system here, that shakes them and gets them into rows, drops them in and then this hood on the back then forms two drills. So it's got all these hydraulic motors here that line the spuds up, you see, they drop down there and then belts are all adjustable for the potato sizes. And it takes it out of this hopper here when it falls in the front. And Stuart's just gonna put another bag in now. A ton of seed potatoes going in there. That's how you grow potatoes. You bury a potato and you end up with 10 potatoes, if not 20. There you go. Stuart checking where all the tractors are. You can actually look out the window and see them though. Put 
that tractor there now is leveling off the bed ends and it makes it level then for the sprayer so when the sprayer is going around the headlands it's not bouncing the booms and also they're not getting stuck at harvest taking the spuds off so they've got like a nice flat headland the seed potatoes come in these mesh sacks so that they can breathe and don't go rotten so it's just fishing one out now for the next load JCB 541, the JCB fans watching. Right, name that yellow bird that's just flown off. I'm going to fly down there now. Bouncing out the drill. Where's it gone? There you go, what's that yellow bird there that looks like a canary? Someone hold out. This is how the de-stoner works. So the soil comes up, they spin around in different directions and the soil has to drop through them gaps. And if it doesn't drop through them gaps, it goes up there and then gets scrubbed by them chains. And then if it still doesn't fall through, it comes out the back elevator. But it drops out. Goes onto that, shoots sideways. And then you can adjust the height to show how much aggression you want on, the, on what you call the, the web, if you will. That's how, how fast the soil has to go up the hill. A load of spuds ready to go. This is the headland all flattened off. But it's just gone with that metal frame bar thing. So that's going to be flat now when the sprayer turns out. So is that. This has just got the last row of cobbles thrown out of the de-stoner then. Before it packs up to go to the next field. And then over here. Hope it's not too windy. That was... That was what he was using to level. So it's just a frame off an old cultivator with a weight on and some angle iron. It's a, it's an I beam or RSJ, you could call it, an old steel joist. The plant is filled up again now, ready to go. So it's got a camera on the back as well. This is the wheat that was after last year's potatoes. So they had potatoes on this field last year. And we've sown it quite, quite late, but it, it looks pretty well. It's got a little bit of grass weeding we need to take out and a bit of mayweed daisies, whatever you want to call it. But on a whole, it's not too bad. The headland was really wet. We couldn't sow that. So Andrew sown that with spring wheat on Thursday. There's still a bit of a wet hole there and over there, but we think it could be a block water main. But I'm quite pleased that we got winter wheat into it because if we'd have left it till the spring and waited for this headland, you know, we'd have had a rubbish crop of spring wheat. We're better off having a, a marginal crop of winter wheat than a rubbish crop of spring wheat going in late. Or even a good crop of spring wheat won't pay as well as a marginal crop of winter wheat. This cat has turned up. And don't you think it looks like Bagpuss because its eyes are close together? Does everyone remember Bagpuss? There's a picture of it now. Who agrees? Yeah, if you agree, leave a comment below. Look at all them pigeons. They're even in the yard now. So I kind of have had a day off. I've been looking at some land, looking at some wheat, and then obviously catching up with them planting potatoes. But it's been too breezy to spray, especially where I need to spray next, because it's against houses. It's not like it's a wheat field in the middle of another wheat field. It's going to like drift over to houses. So tomorrow's a better day for wind. So I'll get it done then. So I did feel not too bad that I could sort of relax today with it being a bank holiday Sunday. Anyway, we'll do the birthday bumper. I just need to write the names on because it's still got yesterday's names on. This is today's birthday bumper. So we've got Lottie, Bobby, Colm. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And Scott Alexandra. So happy birthday to all you guys and anyone else whose birthday it is. Also, remember the other day, the Telegraph came out, took some pictures. This is the article now. But more importantly, you can't actually see it. It's too many pages. But more importantly, the reporter, Chester fell in love with her. So here's a little video of Chester climbing all over her like lapping it up the attention. <laughs> Chester's fell in love. I've never seen him so relaxed, especially with a reporter. <laughs> that is about it for today. I've had Radio 5 on the phone now, wanting to do something live tonight. I don't know whether we will or we get chance or whatever, but 
it's all about this whole should women be allowed to go to the discussion group there isn't really a discussion group but it just keeps rumbling on the, the obviously the telegraph picked it up now the daily mail have picked it up and now radio 5 live have picked it up anyway it just keeps going on but it's not a case of like should they be allowed or shouldn't they be allowed it's basically the, there's, there's plenty of things in the region anyway and it isn't much of a discussion group if anything they should just change the name but i think it's important to to understand and people seem to understand that reading all the comments on the daily mail how important it is for men and women to have their own sex groups to meet even if it is just six times a year anyway that is all for today i will see you tomorrow and we'll actually get some work done tomorrow but it has been nice to sort of have a day off and thanks for watching and i hope you've all had a good day in fact what have you all done today who's been working and who's not been that's a good question you can leave that in the comments right here's a outro which is a homemade ukrainian flag as well <laughs>